I'm Rob Hawkins and this short video is a brief buyer's guide to buying a Volkswagen Bay Window camper van. Starting with the controls up front, check everything works. Also check that the steering hasn't got too much play in it or it's too stiff. If it is, then there's possible problems with the steering. Okay, make sure you can select all gears. The camper van uses a traditional H pattern of first, second, third and fourth. And then a longer second push down and get across into reverse. Any problems here and there may be difficulties with their uh, bushes and linkage which may need replacing. Also check the brake pedal, push down hard, if it sinks to the floor there's a leak or there's a brake master cylinder problem. Finally handbrake, the handbrake is an umbrella type, make sure it holds and secures the back wheels. Make sure all the equipment works in the camper van, for example if there's a fridge, check that it's cold inside and it's warm at the back. If it's gas operated or electric operated, ask to see that working. One well, of the most popular things is a rock and roll bed. These come in three quarter size or full size and make sure this actually works. Usually it pulls out from the front here by a catch and then literally hinges out and folds and down. One of the biggest problems with camper vans is rot. So make sure you check it everywhere. Popular spots behind these seats here and right down in the floors here as well. Check the floors inside and check the floors underneath as well. The same goes for the front floors. Check these panels here where all the water collects and check underneath here as well. And right down into these corners. The bottom six inches of a camper van are where the rust really starts to dig in. So check under the arches, check along the door bottoms as well, get the doors open and check right under here. All the way under, right into the beams as well and under the floor sections as well. Underneath the camper van is where it really all happens. Make sure that all the chassis rails and the outriggers, anything underneath is rot free. There's a lot of rot that can happen, it can be very expensive to repair. Finally the engine. Most are air cooled and they've either got the alternator or dynamo on the top or the later types have got the alternator concealed further below. What you really want to be looking for is any oil leaks around here and then also give this uh, crankshaft pulley a waggle and if you can see it moving there's excessive end float, there's bearings inside are probably worn and it will need a rebuild. Oil leaks can occur on this engine. Look around this area here for example, which is where oil might leak out, and also at the back of the engine where the gearbox meets. If it's back of the engine where the gearbox meets, then that's a engine out to renew a seal. If it's around this area here for example, then usually that can be fixed by putting new seals in as well.